Hey, 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 Mr. Longo here to talk to you about Euler's number E. So E represents the natural base, and its value is 2.71A2A da 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 da, -da, -da kind of like pi. It's a number that just keeps on going. And an old math mathematician by the name of Euler came up with the fact that if you take exponential growth, but instead of just letting it grow every year, what if you let it grow 10 times a year? What if you let it grow a thousand times per year or a million times per year or 50 million times per year? As that increases, what you would be doing is you would be dividing the rate by a certain number of times and raising it by a certain number of times. And what he found is that after you get to about 10,000 times, it's going to approximately 2.718, even if you do it 500 million times. So that's how he came up with the number 2.71828 dot, 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 which represents a natural base, which we know is the number E. So now you know pi is 3.14, blah, 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 blah. Now you know E is 2.718, and we continue. So... We can still simplify and use the same rules as exponents. The only difference is, is they actually have numerical value now. So we know that 2x squared times 4x to the 5th would be 8x to the 7th power. But it's just 2x to the 7th. If we're going to work with e's, 2 times 4 is still 8. And when we multiply, we add our exponents, so that's 2e to the 7th power. But if you were to type that in the calculator, you would actually get a numerical value because e has value. But right now, we're just practicing our rules of simplifying just so they're fresh in your head. Same with dividing. 10 divided by 2 is still 5. We have e to the 5th on top, e squared on the bottom, so we would subtract, giving us e to the 3rd power. When we raise exponents to other exponents, we still multiply, but numbers are still raised to the exponents. So 3 squared is 9, and negative 4 raised to the second is multiplying, so e to the negative 8. But of course, negative exponents want to be downstairs or on the other side. So this becomes 9 over e to the 8th power. And the last one, the square root of 16 is still 4. And the square root of e to the 8x is just e to the 4x because we just take this and divide it by our index, which is 2. So working with e is the same thing. But now let's go talk about some of their graphs. The graphs are going to follow a lot of the exact same rules as exponential graphs. The only difference is, is now the rate is in the exponent. And if the rate is positive, it's exponential growth. And if it's negative, it's decay. So, of course, we're, we're going to use our calculator to do this. I'm not going to expect you to ever be able to do these in your head. There is no number off to the side, so one thing you should be able to do is say that your horizontal asymptote, since this is still a form of exponential growth, is going to be y is equal to 0. Our domain, we can put anything we want in there. Our x is still going to be all real numbers, very similar to growth and decay. But now we need to figure out what this graph looks like. So just type it in your calculator. 2, the E button is second, and then you have to go down to this ln, which rep represents natural log. E to the, and then we just type 0.75x. And just click graph. And we're going to see it's just going to act just like an exponential growth. Now, you're not going to get any nice pretty numbers. Why? Because E is a crazy decimal all by itself, so you're not going to be able to get any nice pretty numbers. Look at the table. Second table. Um, the only thing we have is 0, 2. And that's because, remember, anything raised to 0 is 1. So if we were to raise E to 0, it's still 1. Times 2 is 2, of course. So, and then after that, you're just going to have a bunch of decimals. So we just need to sketch for that. So, since our horizontal asymptote is 0 and the graph is above it, our range is y is greater than 0. So, next one. We should 
be able to determine that since we have a plus 2 on the end, our horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 2. And then our range is going to have, to have something to do with the 2. But in order to graph it, since it's a negative rate, it's going to be a decay. So all we need to do is go type it in. 6e to the negative 0.5x. And then we're going to shift it vertically by 2. Press the graph. And it should be exactly what you're thinking about. You would have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. And this time it's just going to decrease. Our domain, still all real numbers. Our range, it's above the horizontal asymptote, so y is greater than 2. Now you're probably wondering when x is not going to be all real numbers. Well, that's going to come up when we talk about inverses of exponential type equations. But for now, we're good to go. This is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.